right, today we're giving you guys a tour of the transmission room here at Firepunk and kind of standard procedure of what happens when you order a transmission at Firepunk and what we look for. So behind me you'll see the transmission room. Uh, to start with, we start all of our transmissions with a core. Uh, a lot of people think when they're buying a brand new transmission we're going pulling brand new parts off the shelf and just assembling a new trans. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury uh, because the there are no brand new cases brand new valve bodies, uh, some of the core parts, there's only some aftermarket companies that have made some replacement parts that are common wear areas, but there are no brand new leftover parts that we can build from. So we'll start with, say, a core, like what we have right here. Um, that is a core that a customer shipped in, and we're, we'll tear that core down and run it through the parts cleaner, and we'll build it to the next one. I'll show you around. So when we have a core, it comes up here on the teardown table and we flip the thing upside down, dump all the nasty dirty fluid out. Uh, we've got a table here, the tray runs, runs everything to the bucket and uh, we'll discard of that. And then Austin is our teardown guy, he'll disassemble the transmission. When we put, uh, when we tear down a transmission core, we'll put everything in the uh, cleaner, and we will clean all of our, your hard parts: the case, the the drums, uh, everything except for your wearable parts. Obviously, we discard is because we're going to replace that anyway. Uh, but once they're all clean, we bring them over onto a cart over here, and this is what you see would be. This is all the wearable parts are all the stock core parts of a transmission. So you've got your, your overdrive piston support and you've got your pistons, you've got your drums, uh, the parts that we are planning to reuse that are not upgraded, so to speak. So like the case, obviously. And that's why it is so important uh, when you guys send your core in, we're not looking for a good working transmission. We're just looking for a case that's not cracked. We're looking for a pump that's not destroyed because if it's not rebuildable, and then we obviously can't use it for the next build. So after we have a core torn down and cleaned, uh, then basically every transmission is built to order. So if a 2006 four-wheel drive is ordered, then we will get, obviously the work order form comes through, it processes onto a build, build date on the, on the schedule uh, back in the transmission room. Uh, Matt Williamson, as we refer to as Dibbles, uh, he just does, he stacks all the cases. So he'll take a, a clean core uh, from like that 06 four-wheel drive or whatever's ordered and then he will assemble the transmission based on whether it's a tow master with stock shafts or a street track with a billet input setup or a comp 3 with all billet shafts.
and every transmission has its own build sheet. So as we assemble it, we have the name of the customer, uh, we will have the input shaft end play, the direct drum clearance, uh, what parts and pieces were used, maybe any notes uh, that we had to replace the reverse drum because out of, out of the core that was bad or something like that. It's just notes that we have on file so that when, if say, say a guy runs 1200 horsepower for four years and it comes back for a refresh, if there's any notes uh, on the original build or any weird wear that we see, we'll pull the original build date, uh, build sheet and see what the clearance was and gives us a, a way of kind of tracking um, the parts and pieces, what, what has worked the best in the past few years. Uh, behind me you'll see we have kind of have a lot of core parts and pieces. These are transmissions that uh, we've either bought and parted out and we've put parts on the shelf or just spare parts that we bought from suppliers. So we try to keep spare drums, uh, planetary sets, pumps, uh, all your normal wearable parts in the transmission we try to do keep on the shelf so if they come into a problem we can just turn around, grab the right part, put it back together. It keeps us from having to wait on a supplier to send in parts. Uh, then along with billet shafts, we try to keep all standard size billet inputs, uh, oversized billet inputs. Along with that, we have to have machined pump stator supports to fit the larger shafts. And along with, uh, if we do a, a big output shaft, we try to keep the transfer case output shafts in stock as well. So it's kind of a, a battle for us uh, to keep all the parts in stock all the time because sometimes in a week we'll ship a bunch of parts out that people assemble their own transmissions and we're kind of robbing um, some of our, our normal stock out of, so we're always trying to keep an extra 10, 15 parts on the shelf so that we have stuff in stock if you guys need it. If you guys ever need just random parts or pieces, uh, we're willing to sell them individually if you're doing a build at home yourself. Okay, here behind me we've got a bunch of selective snap rings, uh, thrust washers, Torrington bearings, uh, all the parts and pieces that as we're stacking it together and our clearance isn't right, we can just come over here, grab it off the shelf, and get our clearances right. And it makes it easier for when we, when I first started doing transmissions, I would measure something, figure out I didn't have the right part in stock, and I'd have to wait a day or two to supply it uh, for a supplier to ship something in. Uh, but now we keep everything in stock, and we, it makes putting transmissions together seamless, and we can get it accurate the first time. Matt Sensenig does all of our valve body builds. He will, it's the same thing with the transmission. We don't have a brand new valve body case that we can pull off the shelf and build. So we're relying on using the cores that we get sent in and we remanufacture them. When we're working on, on these valve bodies, sometimes, uh, you know, these could have come out of a truck that has, you know, 200, 300,000 miles. And as the valves move in the bore, um, they tend to wear, the valve will wear, and the bore will, will wear. So in order to make sure that everything will work correctly, we have this vacuum test uh, bench. We can actually put the valve into place, try to pull a vacuum uh, where the valve sits, and we can tell if there's too much clearance there, uh, or if it's um, still within spec and good to go. Normally we'd want to see it at about at least 15 inches, so we're down here at about nine. So this one we'll need to uh, we'll need to put an oversized bore. Alright, so we oversized this bore, uh, we have a nice fresh bore surface, a new valve, it's about 15 thousandths larger than the original one, and let me show you again here, we'll do a vacuum test again and we'll show you the increased vacuum and 
a much tighter tolerance between the valve and the bore now. So now we're at about 19 and a half inches of, of mercury. Prior we were only at nine, so we're way above our uh, recommended 15 inches. So now the bore is good to go. Um, we shouldn't have any of the problems associated with a uh, leaking uh, throttle valve. Valve body really is, uh, it's like the engine to the transmission. Uh, it really has to, it, it controls all of your fluid flow. If the valve body's not right, you'll have converter problems and you'll end up burning up a clutch and it's not going to hold power. This is our valve body test machine. Uh, this is a good way for us to verify if we have internal leaks in the valve body. Uh, it doesn't tell us everything that we need to know like it does in the truck because there's no cooler or converter flow, so to speak. It doesn't simulate that. But it does, we can turn line pressure on, we can set line pressure, um, and we can see if the governor pressure solenoid is working correctly. A lot of the valve bodies that are problematic will end up on here and we diagnose the issues here on the bench before we even put it in the truck and it helps us uh, save some time of dropping the pan and pulling the valve body in and out ten times because nobody likes training fluid dripping on them all the time. So this has been something that's been good for us in learning uh, to diagnose some of through our problems and fixing some of these uh, worn out valve bodies. The trains that you saw us build today, this is actually going in my quad cab. Uh, I've had a transmission in that truck for, I don't know, six years or, or more. Um, but this was something that uh, we wanted to test the Matt Sanger uh, oversized, it's actually solid input shaft. It's a new design that a lot of people have been having some, some success with and we're looking forward to seeing what it can do. I always, before I promote this and sell it to a customer, I put it in my own stuff and we'll beat on it for a season. Uh, so by end of the summer, if I have good results in the quad cab, you're going to see this oversized shaft available here at Firepunk. Um, this is a solid input. You see it's machined here, but there's actually no fluid flow. So it's a solid shaft and it uses a different torque converter lockup um, flow. It, it's uh, bringing lockup in on the outside of the stator support instead of on the inside. So we're kind of excited about it. We'll see what it does and what kind of keep you in the loop here on the quad cab as it does. We're going to be racing the 670 index this summer like we normally do with ODSS, tow into the track. Uh, so it's going to see a lot of abuse in a truck that weighs 7,700 pounds and has the capability of making 1400 horsepower. So we'll be uh, keeping you in the loop on seeing how this shaft does and hopefully we'll be able to market this and have a better product for you by the end of the summer. <laughs>